Good afternoon, and thank you to the panel for having me. I stand before you as a descendant of Isaac Wingfield, who was bought and sold on the Wingfield Plantation, and of General T William Tecumseh Sherman, who issued Special Field Order Number 15 for 40 acres and a mule, the first attempted act of reparations. I am joining you on unceded Tongva land and want to acknowledge the land. The aim of my presentation is to discuss with you the culture inside of LASD, which has allowed gangs to come to be and to continues to allow them to grow and multiply. Deputy gangs are a symptom of a broken system. We are discussing things under the lens of deputy gangs, but these issues exist outside of the deputy gang structure too. Next slide, please. Let's start off by defining what a deputy gang is. These are not cliques or subgroups. The California Penal Code describes a gang as, next slide, any organization or group that has three or more people that have a common name or identifying sign or symbol, next slide, as, as one, is one of its primary activities, the commission of one of a long list of California criminal offenses, and finally, next slide, a group whose members have engaged in a pattern of criminal gang activity, either alone or together. Crimes in the case of deputy gangs include murder, rape, kidnapping, money laundering, falsifying police reports. Next slide, please. The movie Mean Girls is a classic example of a clique. It tells the story of a group of high school girls who bully each other and other students. Next slide. These deputy gangs are not cliques, they are criminal. They engage in illegal activity against community members. They have the same tattoos and they use hand signs. Next slide. My main findings are there are at least 18 gangs in the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. The first gang was discovered after the 1970 Chicano moratorium called the Little Devils. Law enforcement gangs are not unique to the Los Angeles area, but we are home to the first known ones. Deputy gangs are responsible for the deaths of at least 19 civilians, all of whom were men of color. Four were in the midst of a mental health crisis. Next slide. LA County also keeps a list of litigation related to deputy gangs. I created a database at Knock LA of deputies alleged to be associates and tattooed members of the gangs. I was inspired to create this by systems like Cal Gang, which is widely used by law enforcement here in Los Angeles County. The bar to get into Cal Gang is incredibly low. It classifies gang members based on family members, where someone may live, or who they're friends with. If you are arrested, it comes with enhancements and more jail time. The deputy gang database acknowledges deputies and upper level personnel who were present or oversaw illegal activities as associates, and those who have been identified in court cases through self-admissions and tattoos are categorized as members. Tattoos are given at so-called 998 parties, named after the police code for officer-involved shooting. It's alleged that in order to enter some of the gangs, a deputy cost LA County at least $100 million, all funded by taxpayers. Next slide. Government agencies such as the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, offices of independent review, all the way up to the federal level have known about deputy gangs for decades, but no action has been taken. Next slide. There have been no meaningful internal investigations, no significant policy changes to address the issue. Next slide. Patterns of deputy gang violence against community members. Next slide. Raids, illegal detainments and arrests, physical assaults, planting and manipulation of evidence. Next slide. Harassment of victims, family members and members of the press, such as myself, and of course, killings of civilians. Next slide. I want to show you how the culture metastasizes throughout the department, so I've put together a case study, um, but I want to give a bit of background first. Once deputies graduate from the academy, they move on to the jails where they do the next part of their training. Then they move on to patrol at a station. There are at least four known gangs inside of the Los Angeles County Jail system. The most popular one is styles themselves as the 3000 boys. But deputy violence inside the jails looks like beatings, sometimes to the point of death, rape, next slide, tasers to the genitalia, OC spray or pepper spray to the genitalia and eyes, next slide. Uh, there have been patterns also of deputy violence and harassment of other LASD personnel that looks like mockery on social media, falsifying reports, denying promotions, threatening murder, and even committing drive-bys on their homes, next slide. 
This is an example of mockery that was posted on social media regarding a whistleblower who attempted to draw attention to a deputy gang called the Banditos. It's captioned, wanted to be a bandito, but I'll settle for Rat Crew King. Underneath it, you'll see a dead rat that was placed on this deputy's personal property. Next slide. Now let's get into the case study. In 2010, Christopher Lee Wilder's jaw is broken by Deputy Jay Brown inside of Men's Central Jail. On December 11, 2011, Deputy Samuel Aldama beats Alquan Jackson, who was incarcerated inside MCJ. Both of these deputies are alleged 3,000 boys associates. Next slide. 2015, Brian Paquette is killed by de deputies Brene Berrigan, Ryan Rothrock, and others. All are alleged to be Spartan associates. April 10, 2015, Tayshawn Gaither is shot by Jay Brown and others. All are alleged to be Spartans associates. Next slide. January 15, 2016, Samuel Aldama and Ms. Renner Rago beat and falsely imprison Sheldon Lockett. Both deputies are tattooed executioners, as you can see on the left. Next slide. March 16, 2016, Christian Medina is shot and killed by Renee Berrigan, who killed Brian Pickett and Jay Brown, and who shot Tayshawn Gaither. Both deputies are alleged to be Spartans associates. Next slide. August 25, 2016, Samuel Aldama and Ms. Renee Rago shoot and kill Dante Taylor. August 16, 2017, Kenneth Lewis is killed by Ryan Rothrock, who also killed Brian Pickett. Next slide. November 2nd, 2017, Ricardo Sandejas Jr. is killed after he is seen by Deputy Samuel Aldama and others holding a gun at his home. Aldama, again, is a tattooed executioner. All others are alleged Spartan associates. Next slide. In total, that's three assaults, one non-fatal shooting, and five deaths across three deputy gangs. All of the deputies that I've spoken to you about appear to be still employed by the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, and some have even been promoted. Next slide. We're talking about this stuff as it relates to gangs, but again, it emulates throughout the culture in the sheriff's department. Gangs are a symptom of the culture. In cities like Compton, contracts are given to LASD by city for law enforcement services, and they're unfulfilled. One way we see that is that cars will be marked as out on patrol, when in reality, they are stationary and parked. The city is still charged for that patrol. Emily Elena Dugdale at KPCC LAist found that LASD deputies present in Antelope Valley schools stop and question black teens up to four times as often as their peers. At least one incident where a deputy physically assaulted a child was circulated on social media. Next slide. Deputies also use a practice called hunting, where they look for someone to arrest to get a statistic. Deputy Angel Reynosa described it to me as utilizing the traffic code to stop people of color for minor violations. Deputies will also take advantage of people who do not know their rights. Next slide. Deputy Gregory Van Hosen killed 16-year-old A.J. Weber in February of 2018. That case was settled for over $3 million. Now, I'll also mention that deputies are rarely financially liable for this because of qualified immunity. 18 months later, Van Hosen killed 22-year-old Jamal Simpson. It's unclear if Van Hosen was ever disciplined for either of those killings, and he is still employed by the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Next slide. LASD continues to avoid accountability, and we see this in multiple ways, from Sheriff Villanueva asking the county to ban the use of the term deputy gangs, all the way up to refusing to comply with subpoenas and evading California Public Records Act requests. Next slide. We've also seen cosmetic fixes, like banning some logos, such as the Fort Apache logo, which was actually placed in the floor of the East Los Angeles station. It was brought back in 2018 by current Sheriff Alex Villanueva. The firing and hiring of deputies is not public, and there are currently no tools to effectively combat deputy gangs. Current policies only target new recruits and do nothing about existing gang members. Next slide. We've, of course, seen doublespeak from Sheriff Alex Villanueva. He has consistently said that there are no deputy gang members in the department, but also that these groups exist in every police department. That, of course, is impossible. Next slide. Let's uh, forward again one more time, please. Oh, OK. Well, I'll just finish off by saying that LASD structure promotes deputy gangs. Classic example is seen under Sheriff Lee Baca, who promoted Paul Tanaka, a tattooed member of the white supremacist Vikings gang, who was his undersheriff. Cecil Rambo, who was friends with Mr. Tanaka for years and is alleged to be associated with deputy gangs himself, is currently running for sheriff. 
uh, current Sheriff Alex Villanueva reinstated Deputy Karen Mandoyan, who was fired for domestic violence. Deputies throughout the department routinely disregard policies and mandates. And another big threat to public safety is uh, media coverage. Next slide, please. Now, since my reporting uh, was published, we are seeing the term deputy gangs widely used in media and local government, as you can see in this GIF. Next slide, please. But there still remains a lot of work to do. My conclusions um, widely stated are there, these are deputy gangs, these are criminal, problematic personnel are retained and promoted, and finally, deputy gangs are a symptom of a larger correct, corrupt culture. For more information on this, I encourage you all to visit lasdgangs.com, where you can view my reporting in depth, as well as the database, which lists all deputy gang members and associates. Uh, I thank the task force so much for their time today.